when people look back at their lives in this world from the hereafter, they're going to look back and think about how much time was wasted. Some people will regret how they lived their lives and how much time was wasted in this world. Now, interestingly, in terms of an eternal life on the day of judgment, how will people perceive how much time they had here in this world? Some people, according to a number of ayats in the Quran, will feel as though the time in this world was like a morning or an afternoon, meaning a very short span of time. Other people, and this is mentioned in the Quran as well, ما لبثوا غير ساعة, they'll feel like they lived in this world for an hour. An hour in this world, that's all that it will feel like in the next life? Was that hour used wisely? Therefore, we ask, is it reasonable for any human being to give up an eternal life, an eternity in paradise, for an hour in this world that was wasted on heedlessness? I want you to think about a quick activity to reflect on the last 10 years of your life. What were you doing in those last 10 years? What did you accomplish in those 10 years? Were those last 10 years, to this day, were they benefiting your long-term goals? Was it benefiting your uh, final destination? Is it something that you feel in 20, 30, 40 years, you look back and say, Alhamdulillah, the last 10 years were actually 10 years in which I was very productive for the sake of Allah. It was very meaningful. There were a lot of very good changes based on the efforts, the consistency that I put in. It was worth it how I lived my life. Or do you feel like there are some regrets, some time that was wasted that shouldn't have been wasted? When you reflect on the last 10 years, if you find any amount of regret, use that regret to motivate you so that the next 10 years, inshallah ta'ala, are more productive. The question is, how often do we reflect? Are we reflecting enough on how much time was wasted? Do we think about hindsight and foresight? And these are very interesting concepts because time in hindsight on the day of judgment will look like nothing in this world. It'll be very quick, like a quick flash before your eyes. I was only there for an hour. I was only there for a few days. I was only there for an evening or an afternoon. And yet I wasted it, or I wasted 50% of it. An excessive amount. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. When we talk about hindsight as well, we ask, is it worth it to give up a level in Jannah, a single level in Jannah, because of a day or two in this world in which something was wasted? Because of time that was spent on something useless? Maybe it wasn't prohibited, maybe it wasn't haram, but did it build up another level in Jannah? Don't we know that, for example, the one who memorizes the Qur'an or any amount of the Qur'an on the Day of Judgment, Prophet ﷺ informs us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell that person, Iqra wa taqli, recite and ascend. For every ayah you recite, you will ascend a rank in Jannah. And where you recite the last ayah that you know is where you will be. That will be your final residence, your final abode. In a way, as many scholars have said in their commentary on this hadith, in a way, you have some control over where you want to end up. What level of Jannah do you desire? And so you might, this is one act of worship, you might spend more time in this world memorizing and reviewing, understanding, implementing the verses that you are memorizing so that your ranks in Jannah are higher. But how about an hour that was wasted every single day on something useless rather than an eye of the Qur'an you could have memorized? In one year, you could have memorized, if you haven't yet at all, you could have memorized 365 ayat. 365 ranks increased in paradise, wasted on maybe a TV show, wasted on some video game, wasted on socializing, wasted on just excessive uh, sleep. And that was taken away. That, that was a, a, an opportunity cost, taking you away from something much better in the next life. In addition to that, that's one year. In addition to that is the long-term accumulation of good deeds, the long-term accumulation of good habits. Memorizing the Qur'an is just one example. It doesn't have to be that. It could have been you reciting the Qur'an. It could have been you learning something new. It could have been you just doing a general act of worship. The ranks in Jannah are worth it. The Prophet ﷺ informs us many authentic hadith. The difference between these ranks is like the difference between the earth that you're on and a star that you see. Meaning what? It's far away. And you don't know the difference in terms of the rewards as well. What if someone keeps living that lifestyle, pushing themselves more and more and more so that their ranks are increased to the highest levels of Jannah? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that. Allahumma ameen. To those who are heedless and they think they're living their lives aimlessly, that their lives are just pure entertainment and they're not thinking about long-term goals, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding them, Do you think we created you without purpose and that to Allah you would not return? 
Do you think you have no aim in this world? You were created for game, you were created for sport, you were created aimlessly? No, you have a purpose. And that purpose is to use your time in this world for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There will be people on the Day of Judgment who say, يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي قَدَّمْتُ لِحَيَاتِي person will say, I wish I prepared more for my life. Hayati, my life, this person is referring to the afterlife. Now they've realized this is the real life. This is the life I should have been preparing for. This is where my attachment should have been, but it wasn't. I was deceived by the deception and the illusion of a dunya, by the distractions that were there, pursuing uh, wealth left and right, pursuing certain things in terms of status or glory or fame or people, relationships, uh, temptations, desires, pursuing what is temporary over that which is eternal. So the person will say, يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي قَدَّمْتُ الْحَيَاتِ I wish I prepared more for my life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, forgive us, and make us from amongst those who are preparing more for the eternal life through our daily habits. If you think to yourself that you're generally doing enough because let's say you pray the five prayers, let's say you do the basic obligations, alhamdulillah, but ask yourself the following question. Would you rather, in this world, would you rather take a mansion that you had to live in for the rest of your life or a broken down cabin, free, no charges, no, no fees, no taxes, nothing at all? You'd likely take the thing that you see to be better because you're going to be in it for a number of decades. If you were given one car to drive for the rest of your life and every year they give you the same car brand new as you desire, aren't you going to choose a car that you really like? Of course you are, but that's just a dunya, that's just here, that's temporary. It doesn't even follow you to your grave. When you're resurrected and you see your position in the afterlife, you're going to want the highest levels of Jannah. You're going to want to be neighbors with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But once you're there, you can't change that. This is the chance for, for, for actions. This is your opportunity to do uh, without any accountability, without any hisab. You're going to get reminders, but there's no accountability here. But in the next life, there's, an, uh, there's accountability and there's no opportunity. So take every opportunity that comes your way and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you.